Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Our guest today is from a company that has the desire to help solve the current global energy crisis and deliver clean and renewable energy. He will give us an update on the company's recent acquisition, collaboration, products, and his thoughts on where renewable energy is headed. He is the CEO and Director of Interdynamic Hybrid Technologies, Inc., John Gamble. But before we bring John on, just a friendly reminder to tap on that subscribe button for me, please. John, welcome to The Dive. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Okay, so as we do with all of our new guests, what's the high-level two-minute elevator pitch for interdynamic hybrid te technologies? Uh, the company now has moved ahead. Uh, now we're moved out of the development stage of business into commercialization of all our different various products. Um, where we have you know, different from our grow units to uh, power wagons to uh, now we're into uh, with our housing in uh, Puerto Rico. Um, we have uh, looking at uh, disaster relief stuff with, uh, with FEMA, um, all different types of uh, products that, that all base in our, and around our patented solar technology and our uh, skin technology that uh, we've developed over the last five years. So in Q2, you announced a definitive agreement for the acquisition of Windular Research Technologies, Inc. What can you tell us about the acquisition and the synergies this creates for Interdynamic? Well, I'm happy to say that the acquisition is complete. Uh, it happened uh, on August the 25th. You know, the Windular and EHT, we've been talking now over the last couple of years, what are technologies and our technologies coming together. You know, now that Windular has is, is started to, uh, has got large contracts with uh, companies like Bell Canada and uh, Telenor in uh, Pakistan, you know, utilizing our technology for solar with their wind product, you know, just totally makes sense. We can provide now a total solution to these uh, telecom providers. Um, for complete renewable off-grid, you know, again, to get uh, as, as many uh, towers uh, off diesel as possible, you know, to reduce their carbon footprints. Mm -hmm. Okay, so could you speak to your $21 million purchase order in Puerto Rico? Certainly. The, the $21 million uh, purchase order is a combination of, you know, over four years of, of work, number one, uh, in Puerto Rico. But, uh, you know, we've been ready to start building in Puerto Rico since 2018. Uh, but the, the holdup has been the previous administration in the U.S. Uh, was hesitant to, to send any funds to Puerto Rico. And uh, even though the hurricane happened in, you know, 2017, um, now, you know, nothing has been built. You know, what I can say, you know, uh, is now, the new administration since January has sent over $20 billion to Puerto Rico. And those funds now are getting down to the, to the level of municipal governments where these contracts, as, as we've announced, you know, are starting to, to come about. And uh, you know, as we go forward here, we will get more and more contracts. I mean, there is over 38,000 houses to be built here, and it's just not a, a short-term project. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of sorely not pleased to say that, and maybe pleased to say from our perspective that only 200 houses is, have been built since the hurricane. So wow. it is a massive project still to go forward. And, you know, we, ca we, we plan on capitalizing on as many, uh, homes as we can, um, as we go forward here into for revenues for EHT. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you also announced an engagement with Pride Signs. Could you give us some color on this collaboration? Certainly. Uh, we've been working with Pride, you know, over six months now. Uh, we've developed uh, using our solar technology uh, to be able to put that in, and embed it into the backing of, of signage material. Um, and this is the first, first uh, commercial uh, 
project uh, moving out. Uh, it's a small project, but it's going to be on a on a sign in that's going to actually North Carolina. Um, but we're also working on larger contracts with uh, you know major major uh, industry uh, leaders um, to do their signs on their front lawns and whatever. I mean, all of this comes about because of two things. Number one, you know, sign business moving to LEDs, which take very little power. Uh, our solar panels now are are producing more and more power and battery technology is now at the point where, you know, you can store enough uh, battery power, you know, in a small area to, uh, to power these signs at night. Um, and, you know, of course, fill the batteries up with the solar during the day. So again, it's a huge uh, change and will be a huge change in the signage business um, to be able to not have to, to have any type of grid system or grid power connected to any of these, uh, you know, any signage that uh, is around your buildings. You know, Pride is the number two sign company in North America. So this is not oh. a, a small contract. It's not a small firm. They're very large and very competitive and doing, you know, very, you know, a lot of different signage for, for a large corporation. Very cool. Okay, so as you mentioned, you're involved in mobile power. Could you talk about the scalability of this type of product? Certainly. Um, the mobile power, I mean, we've started off with uh, power wagons, as we call them, utilizing our lightweight solar technology that can be embedded into our fiberglass. So therefore, the, the outside of the trailer uh, or the mobile trailer, you know, is completely, you know, uh, covered with our solar panels. You know, this is only, you know, we're the only people that can do this uh, type of technology. I mean, regular solar panel, if you put that on a trailer and took it down the highway, you know, you get a few, a few rock chips and the solar panel would just be destroyed. Our material can take the rock chips, you know, ale, whatever, it doesn't hurt it. The other, so the scalability is, I mean, we've started with 3K, three kilowatt trailers. We've moved to five kilowatt trailers and we just recently now making, you know, 10, 10 to 15 kilowatt trailers. Uh, which you'll see rolled out here in the next uh, couple of weeks, which, you know, the more power we can create, you know, the more sustainability or usability in the contracting world or for, again, for FEMA, for disaster relief, to roll these in uh, as mobile units, especially after, after disaster. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to these technologies, where are you seeing the biggest demand on renewable energy? Well, the biggest demand is, is again, being able to deliver power into areas that there is no power, um, you know, again, after a disaster, but also, you know, in uh, areas of, you know, North America and around the world that, uh, you know, there, there is really no power grid and you, you, you're relying on off-grid power, or if you're re relying only on diesel power, you know, this is uh, certainly a, a offset of that uh, in a lot cheaper in the long run to, to have a mobile power station than have a diesel generator running and you have to keep feeding it with uh, diesel power right? or diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what do you think are the factors that accelerate the green energy transition from the traditional fossil fuel-based energy? Well, the factors are, you know, a number of them um, and it's a package. I mean, you know, one of the things, the main thing is of course, on the lighting side, LEDs, uh, reducing the power to, you know, drain uh, on a renewable system. You know, uh, you know, a hundred watt light bulb before, you know, is now, you know, a 15 watt uh, LED. You know, that, um, that was an unbelievable change. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so now you can, you know, you can look at running houses, you know, on four or five kilowatts of power before you were at 10 kilowatts of power. So by reducing, that dependency that reduces the amount of uh, solar required reduces the cost and makes the cost work exponentially. You know, for and you know anywhere between a three to five year payback. You now, you know, changing over to renewables. You know, and before you know it was you know seven to ten years, which wasn't very economically viable for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. So, do you have any plans on expanding your market to countries like the United States? Oh, most certainly. I mean, uh, we're already looking at uh, setting up a shop in, especially 
just across the border here in Niagara Falls, New York. You know, once uh, COVID gets over here and we can actually cross the border freely back and forth. I mean, we're, of course, we're already set up and we're already manufacturing in Puerto Rico, um, which is part of the US. Um, we have a joint venture, of course, in Ghana, West Africa, um, which is again on temporary hold with, with COVID, but uh, we hope to have that operation back up and running and start building homes in, in Ghana sometime early next year. All right, John, sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and telling your story on The Dive. Great, thanks very much. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow, so be sure to follow us by hitting that subscribe button.